Hi, I'm Liz from Arca Space. On this week's episode, we'll be meeting with Spaceport America to discuss ground testing as well as launch preparations. We will also be preparing our feed system for testing next week. We brought down the test tank from the test stand and we are going to prepare this for the pressure test for next week. And here we have the Demonstrator 3 rocket tank mold and we are going to cast this in the next few weeks. It's, it's more than, uh, I think it's a, like 199,200 pound seconds, mm -hmm. then it's, that doesn't qualify for part one on one. And it's, it's the impulse, it's not the thrust. Mm -hmm. So it's a little under 200,000. So that's, and that's the key thing. So I, I did the arithmetic on yours and you have a fairly long burn time. I think the thrust isn't that great. But uh, the yeah, burn like time 4.2 tons. Yeah, but your burn time is so much longer. It's longer. Yeah, so the, so the total impulse. Uh, anyway, that's what we... So if we stay below 200,000, that would be good? Well, it, it still have to have, it still have to go through a waiver process, but that's much easier to do, yeah. And then that size rocket, I didn't know if that fit with your uh, system, but it sounds like... Yeah. It would seem like you could, you could accomplish most of your objectives with a, with a less... Um, I mean, if you pushed it right up to that limit, you'd be flying as a uh, high-powered rocket. Okay. And, and there's a lot to be said for that. You know, you can, you can achieve pretty impressive performance with that. Up aerospace goes to 75 miles up with that. So always one of the questions that they're most concerned about is safety. Yeah. And so um, they want to know, I don't know, I don't, I don't think you're planning to have any kind of a thrust termination system. Mm, no, we have burst discs. Right, so yeah, once the, burst, once the disc is gone, it's got to go until the fuel's gone. Uh, usually they want to do some modeling and simulation, they want to do some safety analysis, okay. but that's not been too much of a problem. I assume you've done some modeling and simulation already. Yeah. So you have some pretty good <coughs> ideas about things What's like happening? that. So it will be way shorter, the process. So they, they claim 60 day turnaround. Uh, our experience has been they turn around a lot faster than that. Okay. But, but, but they, are, they allow themselves up to 60 days. Okay. If on the other hand, you look at your numbers and say, you know, you're not able to meet your test objectives because you really want to do that, yeah. then, then what's kind of the timeline that yeah. That it would take to actually just get the uh, to license. To get the license? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it can take, let's see, what I think they have 120 days from the time the application is deemed complete. Yeah. To and then. Right. And what they like to do is work with the applicant yeah. to make sure that when, you, uh, that when you start the process, the application really is indeed right. complete. So that's not necessarily that hard to do. Uh, but it does take some time. We've worked with customers in the past on these situations, and I know sometimes one customer in particular has been kind of frustrated by the process. But I think when it was all over, they understood that, hey, that was really a smart thing to do. So. Yeah, that's all. For sure, we are going to have a meeting tonight and see what we can do. If we can go to 25 seconds, I guess, uh -huh. uh, or <coughs> we absolutely need 85 and see what results we okay. have. And we are going to tell you tomorrow. So the, the business case long term is really just to have the rocket get developed and then once it's up there and flying and getting to orbit, then the question becomes, okay, what type of payloads and, and, and can you integrate The market is it? pretty huge. Like there are 3,000 satellites available for launch. So I would say it's pretty good. Yeah. But let's, let's develop everything. Let's have the rocket first right. and then develop the rocket, the capability. Yeah, and then, okay, we have a contract, but let's have real contracts, not 
Yeah, yeah I agree with you. It's kind of silly when yeah, it's silly, like when they yeah. announced that somebody signed a contract with uh, NASA to launch 14 satellites in 10 years with a vehicle that's, that's just an idea. Even if that's yeah. a blueprint yeah. or something. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, happens all the time. Lots yeah. of those contracts are out there. Yeah, and every now and then a SpaceX yeah. comes along and actually builds a rocket. And oh yeah, <laughs> SpaceX that's another story. Yeah, yeah. they are incredible right. and it's serious stuff. Right. But uh, when you don't have a rocket and sign contracts, yeah. Now, in my opinion, it's a waste of time. So yeah, I prefer to have the team focusing on what they are doing than signing con virtual contracts. No, that that makes sense. We looked into suppliers of hydrogen peroxide once before, we had a hard time finding anybody. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken, I think, isn't that stuff shipped in aluminum drums? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Drums, yes. Yeah. So, and that'll be shipped this, from? Uh, uh, from Houston, I guess. Okay, Houston, okay. Yeah, these drums are pretty safe. They have a, a pressure yeah, relief valve. Yeah, 70%, uh -huh. is that right? 70%, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll work on getting a quick contract in place uh, that'll be able to support your, your thrust stand tests and then a launch of this demonstrator uh, at whatever altitude makes sense. Yeah. And move to another contract when it comes to for the, the Haas. Yeah. For, for, for the for the ah, well, well, I mean, we could do it. We could do a deal with for for the demonstrator vehicle, okay. which includes complete. the engine static testing plus a flight right. test. Okay. So okay. And then the complete package for the demonstrator. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that same pad that we would use to support the test stand could, the be, same the, path. could be the pad that we use to launch from. Okay. But when we start talking about a uh, a combustion driven engine as opposed to a chemical decomposition driven yeah. engine. Now we're talking about, you know, concrete that's going to be damaged and things like that. So we might be talking about some dedicated pad or something. Okay. So. And then from my understanding, based on your um, meeting that you're having this evening, um, if you don't have to get the FAA uh, Yeah, we're going to, to send you an email. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'd love to hear you. Of course. Uh, Michael, can you bring the data acquisition system with the sensors? Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be the, the test stand. Yeah, the load itself, that's going to be the first actual scale. Yeah, the studies. Yeah, factory cables. They came from the factory, so yeah. it's the Swedish motion. So you have to protect those, obviously, with the heat. Uh, um, it's low temperature. Low temperature. So in the chamber is 250 degrees Celsius, yeah. which is, I don't know, part of it. But, <laughs> I agree, it's not a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what was well, it about 95 here or something like that? So the injector plate is that? So yeah. that's the closet too. That's the closet. This is the the tank for the for the demonstration. Okay. On top of this, you'll cast this for the fiber. Yes. Fiber yes. Wrap around it. Okay. Yeah. Just go to cure. Yeah. Whatever. These tanks are usually two times lighter than a turbo pump pet system. So it's very, very light. It's going to be exciting to see. Hi, we just finished the meeting with uh, Spaceport America and uh, they gave us uh, a pretty bad news that um, Demonstrator 3 rocket is uh, too powerful and uh, it needs an uh, FAA license. Um, initially we uh, thought that uh, this license might not be necessary as we were performing the flight from uh, Spaceport America, but uh, eventually um, we figured out that uh, we need this uh, license. Um, there are some options to apply for a waiver with uh, the FAA uh, but in this case, we will need to limit the uh, duration of the engine run uh, from uh, 85 seconds, as uh, we have it now, to probably 30 seconds. We just uh, made some uh, quick calculations together with the Spaceport uh, team. Uh, this is kind of bad news because in this case, we need to fly lower than 100 kilometers. Um, but we didn't take uh, any decision until now. We are going to have an internal meeting uh, and work with uh, together with the Spaceport team to see what's the best uh, option for us uh, going forward. So um, we'll keep you updated with uh, the final decision. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we will begin testing the feed system as well as some of the other elements on our test article. See you next week on Flight of the Aerospike.